Hello and welcome to Scotty Hall on YouTube. Tonight's Raw was the best Raw I've seen in three years since the Nexus storyline came out in 2010. The most shock value, the most entertaining, breathtaking, edge of your seat kind of Raw that you want, that it should be. That they would not have anybody question their authority about anything that they do. It was just awesome. They really put on a show. They sold it completely, and here I am to tell you about it. My name is Scotty Hall, and I want to welcome you to Scotty Hall on YouTube, and this is going to be Raw Highlights. Thank you. Raw starts off in total darkness. They're in Brooklyn, New York, the first time ever, and they're trying to sell the fact that they're going to put on a good show. So they start off in darkness. And everybody thinks, I think they think it's the White family, but it's not. It's Brad Maddox. And he's doing his first night as GM at, at Raw. And he makes a bunch of good matches. He starts out, and then John Cena interrupts him. And they say, this is what it's like to be in the Brad Maddox era. He said, well, Cena, if you're going to say that, then I'm going to allow you to do something the first time in history that has ever been done in the WWE. I'm going to allow you to choose your opponent for SummerSlam. And John Cena looks around for a minute, then he gets interrupted by Randy Orton. Randy Orton comes down and says, You don't need to ask Cena about the money. I mean, you don't need to ask Cena about SummerSlam because there's a chance that he will not even be champion by SummerSlam. Randy Orton gets in interrupted by Fandango. Fandango said, There's only one person you should choose to fight you, and it's me. The crowd goes crazy. They're Fandangoing and everything. Randy Orton hits him. And that's the first match they schedule. So they have their match. Randy Orton gets the victory. And it's just it goes from there. And I, I don't know what to say about it really. CM Punk comes out to the ring. And he's one that he says, I know that Brock Lesnar's in the building. And I know that Paul Heyman's in the building. So come out, boys. I got 13 stitches in my head. And I don't care who I have to fight. But I'm going to get some answers. So Paul Heyman comes down to the ring, well not to the ring, but to the Titan Tron entrance and everything, and was shouting back to, forth to CM Punk, like in 2005, you, you were nothing, and without you, without me, you're nothing. I took you, we were the best in the world, we were the reigning, defending WWE champion, without me, you are nothing, and I know that the reason that I turned on you last night at Money in the Bank was because I know that you cannot beat Brock Lesnar. And Punk says, I can do anything I want to. I can beat Brock Lesnar. I can beat anybody. And when I do beat him, I'm going to stand over top of you, and you're going to be the only one left. And I'm going to say, why did you do this to me? And I'm going to show you how I am the best in the world without you. So they sit down there. Paul Heyman sits down and he says, You know what? I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. He draws a circle in the, in the aisle and then he says, It's clobbering time. And then all of a sudden Brock Lesnar's music hits. Brock Lesnar comes out and he, 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 he comes out and he does his little thing in front of the ring and Paul Heyman sneaks up behind Punk and hits him. And all of a sudden Brock Lesnar grabs him and he just totally beats the hell out of CM Punk throws him around like a rag doll. I do not see how in the world that CM Punk could beat Brock Lesnar. Honestly, Paul Heyman is the best promoter that has been around in 25 years, even back to NWA when he was poly dangerously. He is the reason. CM Punk had the talent. CM Punk did what he had to do, and he, 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 he elevated his game to what he needed to be, but Paul Heyman was a good mouthpiece. Paul Heyman, just being associated with Heyman, is going to make you a star. And Paul Heyman really had a lot of key points that he made to, to the point of CM Punk. He said, you came this close to beating The Undertaker, but you couldn't get the job done. And you left, and you came back, and now CM Punk thinks he's better than Paul Heyman. Well, I have news for you. You are not better than me. And that's why he had him attacking. So if anyone watched Money in the Bank, they know that AJ got Dolph Ziggler disqualified in Alberto Del Rio's match for the world title. AJ hits Dolph Ziggler. AJ hits Del Rio with the Divas title and gets him disqualified. And 
Doss like, I don't even know what she's doing out here anyway. I didn't want her out here. Why should I get disqualified? But anyway, he got disqualified at Money in the Bank. So you see Dolph walking in the back, and AJ comes up to him and says, Hey, honey, what are we doing? Blah, blah, blah. And he said, I need to go off on my own. And she said, What do you mean? I need a break. What do you mean by you need a break? I need a break from you. I don't want to be associated with you anymore. He breaks up with AJ Lee. So they scheduled a match. Brad Maddox scheduled a match between Del Rio and Dolph again. But I don't think it was for the world title. But still, it's the point of the match. So Dolph's pretty much getting the best of him and everything. And they're having a good match. Del Rio puts on a good show. And then you hear the bell ring and almost toward the end of the match. You hear the bell ring and it's like it's going to stop. Everybody's looking over at the ring table. Everybody's looking at the announcers and everything. It's like, who rang the bell? The match stops for a second. Then you look over and it's A.J. Lee holding the ring bell thing that she rung the bell. And Del Re I mean, Dolph's looking at her and saying, what are you doing? What are you doing? And Del Rio kicks him in the head and gets the one, two, three. So A.J.'s going psycho because he broke up with her. You know how she is. So she crawls up in the ring. And she's got that black widow look on her face. She's even got a spider necklace. So I guess this is a new character for her. I mean, it, she's just crazy. And she goes off and she's like, I loved you. Why would you do this to me? She starts slapping him and slapping him. And he gets up finally. And then he's like trying to get her off of him but not really pushing her. And then she slaps him one time and he turns away from her. And then all of a sudden, Big E Langston clotheslines him. And it was all on then. Big E Langston turned on Dolph Ziggler, got him in his finisher. And it's just amazing that he's laying there all out and everything. And AJ picks up his hair and gives him a kiss, like the kiss of death pretty much. So AJ and Dolph are broke up now, so I like to see where this is going. I hope Big E's doing it for himself, not for AJ, not for anybody. But I hope he's doing it for himself. And Dolph doesn't need anybody. Dolph doesn't need none of them. We have a real opportunity here to see the next Shawn Michaels. I'm serious. Give him five more years. If he can go by himself, we can see the next Shawn Michaels. Our truth comes out to the ring, and we haven't seen him in since Kofi Kingston was tag teaming with him. He's singing What's Up. It's going extremely long. He's like, What's Up? Well, you know how he does. And anyways, it cuts to black. It shows the lamb guy on the screen. It's the Wyatt family. So they light their candle lantern and, and saying, We're here. You were here three weeks ago or two weeks ago. So, I mean, you're walking down and the Wyatts are walking down and Bray sits down in his rocker and then they attack our truth and tear him up and then all of a sudden he's sitting there rocking he gets up and walks into the ring our truth gets up on the top of it well i mean i'm jumping ahead bray white cuts a promo and he's saying that what if i tell you that your creator has lied to you the whole time what if i told you that the flesh and bones that you came from was a lie and that I would never turn my back on you. The guy that created you turned his back on you. It's like he's this preacher, kind of like a, a cult leader pretty much. And he was preaching his sermon in front of everybody. And they were giving him a hard time at first saying, what, what? At least they didn't chant Husky Harris this time. But they were giving him the what and what. And then when they finally listened to him and he got them to calm down, he said that, you know, everybody, everybody thinks that they can just go off and do what they want to but I have friends all in in the name of cause so what he's trying to say is that he's going to band together a lot more people but you see our truth get up on the ring and he started saying you want you want some you want some he's got a chair so the guys get out that are with him the white family and husky well not Bray White I don't mean to call him husky but it's hard to do but Bray White's in there saying, you want some, you want some? And our truth got the chair and he goes in the ring. He said, what are you waiting for? I'm standing right here. What are you waiting for? Go ahead. You bad. What are you waiting for? And then he sees the guys jump up on the apron and our truth goes to swing at them. And Bray White actually hits him in the corner. So we get to see 
Bray Wyatt punch our truth a couple times, and then the guys come in and actually knock him out, and then Bray Wyatt is sitting there over top of him, and like he grabs a microphone, he said, "You are not the truth we're in seek of. You are not the truth that we are looking for." And he said, "Kane, follow the buzzards," and then it went off. So I don't even know what that means. He, it's all messed up, but. They, they cut a pretty good promo, and R-Truth got buried again. So it cuts to the back, and Brad Maddox is sitting there and just saying, yeah, I'm doing a really good job, kind of talking to himself. And then Jericho comes into the scene. He said, huh, you showed up. He said, well, he said, what a way, what a way to impress the champion and put in your bid to fight John Cena. We're going to line up the whole roster and you're going to pick, John Cena is going to pick from the roster that is in front of him at the end of the show. He said, what better way to impress John Cena, Jericho, as to fight somebody named RVD. So he told him if he fought RVD that that would impress John Cena and maybe he would pick him. So they schedule a match between John Cena, I mean between RVD and Chris Jericho. So we see Mark Henry walking in the back. He's got a suit and tie on and everything, and it looks like he's going to retire again. So he comes out to the ring, and he's saying, Last night I fought John Cena. I gave him everything I had, and he did something to me that I never thought he would do. And the crowd starts chanting, You, you tapped out. You tapped out. And he said, yeah, I did tap out. I ain't making no excuses. And I guarantee you he can make every one of you in this arena tap out too. So I'm not saying anything. I'm not making any excuses. I'm just saying that everybody's saying that they're putting their bid in to fight John Cena. And I think that I should be the one to fight John Cena. And he, he says, I want to challenge Cena at SummerSlam. I think I need one more shot and I can get it done. And then all of a sudden the shield comes down. And they swarm the ring and everything and they just destroy mark henry mark henry put up a really really good fight he kind of like they got him in a corner he pushed off three of them i mean with two of them and then all of a sudden roman reigns was still sitting there in the corner but he goes off and dean ambrose jumps up or seth rollins either one jump up on his shoulder and got him by the neck and then all of a sudden roman reigns comes out with a spear in the corner puts him out I mean he couldn't he couldn't take on three guys he's a big old guy but still that it took a lot to put him down and they got him up in the triple power bomb and all you seen was Mark Henry laying there so I don't think he'll get the shot but it was just crazy how they laid him out it, but I guess trust in the shield so we get to the main event RVD and Jericho and Jericho, I mean, RVD comes out of the curtain, and I was like, I was excited, but when I saw him come out of the curtain, I was like, no, he, he looks like he doesn't really fit in, and then he come down the ring and done RVD, and the crowd went crazy, so Jericho comes out, and they get started, what a great match, I was thinking that even if RVD is rusty, Jericho can carry him, because they're, they're two people that pretty much started about the same time. I mean, Jericho may have started a little earlier and RVD started, but you know when they started. Anyway, they they were going at it. And, and I look at the time on Raw and I'm like, it's only 10.25. And what are they going to schedule here? They actually had a 23-minute match. And even though it looked like RVD was kind of rusty and winded and everything, they put on a great great match i mean a lot of like submission holds and bear hugs and pretty much rest holds too but at the same time they were carrying each other rvd sold this match like crazy one time jericho flipped him in the corner and it looked like it damn near broke his neck it was crazy he sold the ddt jericho got him in a ddt rvd stood straight up he did a rolling thunder and everything and at the end of it though jericho got him in the lion tamer 
and then he got to the ropes and then he switched it on him and done the, the rolling thunder again and then he got up on the top rope and done the five star frog splash. So RVD, when he stood up on the ropes, they all chanted RVD. That was pretty cool. But what a great match. RVD with the win, it kind of looked good to see him come back and actually try to reclaim his throne of Mr. Monday Night. But it was an awesome match. That's the way wrestling should be. You should be hanging on the edge of your seat thinking about who's going to win. It's been a long time since I've seen wrestling like this, and I'm glad that I was able to witness it. So now we get to decision time. We have all the superstars lined up that are putting in their bid to fight John Cena. And I'm like, I told my girlfriend, I hope they don't cue his music. He should already be in the ring. Sure enough, they fire his music up. Bad enough that he has to walk through the crowd and go to the ring and then look back at the crowd to sell it. This is what we are all talking about. Now, I like John Cena, but at the same time, I do not like the fact that he's separating himself like he's standing in the ring looking up at all the superstars on the roster and saying like who should I pick this guy is being put on a pedestal and he's like should I pick the great Kali maybe I should pick somebody that can dance I can pick all these people I could pick Heath Slater nobody likes Heath Slater oh well maybe I can pick just whoever I want to pick but anyway it's just ridiculous how they're putting him on a pedestal. I know he's the champion, but it's just what that goes to show what all these people on the internet are talking about, that he buries all the talent. He was burying everybody by this promo. But he said, well, he said, I've done went through the whole roster. He said, I just, I don't think I can pick anybody. I, I think I'm going to leave it up to you guys to help me decide. And they said, he said, well, have I left out anybody? And the crowd was chanting, yes, yes, yes. And he said, no, I don't think I, I don't think I left out anybody. He said, so I made my decision. And the guy I choose to fight at SummerSlam is Daniel Bryan. Oh, my God, you thought the roof went off the place. And I got excited, too, because I, I'd like to see it. But at the same time, with the way Cena's credibility is and the way they book Cena, it's kind of a missed opportunity. But the wrestling fan in me holds on to the fact that this could be a passing of the torch to the new face of the company. Because Cena is getting up there in age. He needs to he needs to share the spotlight. Maybe he's going to go off and do something different. But either way, Daniel Bryan and Cena are going to happen at SummerSlam. If nothing else messes it up with Randy Orton having this briefcase and everything. But I'd love to see it. I think Cena will pass the torch. I really feel that way. I hope so. I hope he doesn't bury him. Because who better to lose to than somebody that has a lot of heat behind him and the crowd loves him. So they're going to miss an opportunity to really put the title on somebody that needs it right now, to need it for ratings and everything. Because this was a very good Raw, and they need to keep this up. So the only way that they can do it is to put the title on somebody that deserves it and needs it and wants it. So I hope they do that. When you put it all together, a pretty decent Raw, very good by standards of now, the days in the 2010s and up, just, it, it's, it's hard. And every time that we get something, we want to hang on to it. They throw us a bone and we act like there's meat on it and we eat the bones. But let's just hope that this stays with the trend and they have a good Raw this time, they have a good Raw next week. But usually they'll go backwards to go forward and it just messes it all up but we'll take what we can get so this was a good raw i'll give it a 7.5 out of 10 and i just hope that it continues and go daniel bryan i hope i wish you the best i hope you get that belt off cena and cena your time was later just let somebody else have a chance that's all i can say i want to thank you all for watching remember we all have a video camera we all have internet and we all have an opinion.